Why do I think this book was supposed to be longer? I feel like I came out of like a fast time warp, just feeling all good and tingly. when one of my best friends handed me a book from an author that I didn't know and she said, here girl, read this. Now, this was new to me and I didn't think I'd be pulled into books like these. I was a fool because it's books like these that take me into a whole nother realm of reality and I just get pulled in every time. The book of the week is Blood Moon on the Rise by Lauren Smith and for all the readers out there who need a short story that gives you love and drama and action, this book right here gives you like that hit that you need that will leave you feeling very satisfied. This was a good read. I shed a tear a little bit when it ended, like I was cringing for more. Surprisingly, there were not that many characters, which was a good thing because the flow of the book, of the storytelling, was really wild. That alone will keep you interested. Tamara. Tamara. A hunter, plain and simple. Not just any hunter, really. She hunts the more supernatural characters when they decide to, you know, cut up and go towards the evil side. And I must say, she is really good at what she does. Lord Smith did really well at describing her as this strong, independent woman who knows her objective for the Brotherhood and executes it to a T. But she's also a woman who pines for something that she can't have, and that's the love of one man. Nicholas is Tamara's watcher, and he is fine. For a second, just a second, I was jealous. I mean, Whew. That man right there. Okay, back to the character. Being a watcher, he has a magical power in him that helps him really protect Tamara. And it really helps him, particularly when she gets herself in sticky situations. I like the whole magic aspect of his character and the fact that he didn't really hide behind his magic that much. I mean, he was strong too and, you know, he didn't really use his magic as a crush towards the end, but, you know, towards the beginning, he didn't really think it out too well though when it came to this next character. Jacqueline is mad as hell. Really old sorceress who uses men for her own pleasure, whether they like it or not. She's the type of woman that when she wants something, she's not gonna ask for it, she's not gonna beg for it. She's just gonna go and get it. She's on this path of revenge here when you meet her and knows a trick or two up her sleeve when it comes to getting what she wants. Now let's all guess what she wants. The book doesn't really start off with the action or the love or the drama, but actually starts off with Tamara in a bar looking for a target, which confused me at first because I thought she was going in there to go get a drink or go get a guy. But as the book starts to progress, you start to see it. And when she sees him into the bar, oh, it is on. It is a werewolf, by the way, with a bad streak that needs to be put down. During these first few scenes, you get a feel for her character and see what she really wants in her life. Right when you think you're about to say goodbye to her, in walks Nicholas. Late, by the way. They both end up getting the job done and just heading back home like it's a normal Saturday and there is so much sexual tension in that apartment, you can literally cut it with a butter knife. Because of certain rules set up within the Brotherhood, they're not allowed to be together. You know, like, together, together. After you're done feeling sorry for them, you meet Jacqueline and the man they killed was her man and she is pissed. Using her own type of magic, she finds out the culprits, and we all know who they are, and she sets out to get her revenge. Meanwhile, in No Love Land, Tamara and Nicholas get a surprise visit from the head honcho Damien, who warns Nicholas that they are in danger by this chick. Like, this chick is more than what she seems. While all this is happening, you start to see why these two have a huge thing for each other, and really how it all started, and how the tension really built. Their pairing was odd in the first place, and you find out that, well, find out why as well. After the warning, Nicholas ups his game and puts more protections around the house. 
But that doesn't stop Jacqueline. And I laughed from a good place when I figured out how she entered. She ends up putting this hardcore spell on Nicholas that affects not just him, but Tamara as well. And this was funny to me for a second because once Jacqueline does that, we wake up and all of a sudden the body takes over. And Tamara is just looking at him like, what is wrong with you? But whatever is wrong with you, I like it. Once we find out what's really going on, we have to fight what we've been hiding from each other the whole time and get down to the real problem, which we do. And I must say, that was one for the books because I didn't really see that one coming. I thought we were gonna go into another book of hunting this crazy lady down and I was gonna ask Lauren Smith if I could, you know, get that next book coming up, but nope. We, we fixed the problem right then and there. As short as this book was, I wish, I wished it was longer or at least another book. Like I was trying to read after the end. But all in all, it was still a good book. Like I said, the flow of the book really moved well. It had its moments where I was asking, what is gonna happen now? I really love the backstory or the past of these characters because it showed how this love that Nicholas and Tamara had grew and how it built into something that they could not partake in. <laughs> and it was funny to me because it took another woman coming in and showing them that they needed more than this friendship. I would read this book over and over and over and hope that Lauren Smith would make a sequel to it. But if she doesn't, thank you, Lauren, for Blood Moon on the Rise, a very unique and suspenseful love story.